from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Open phones this hour at 888-825-5225. Multiple number one best-selling author and Ramsey personality, Rachel Cruz. My daughter is my co-host today. Open phones here. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Victor is with us in Irvine, California. Hi, Victor. How are you? I'm doing well, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hi. So, um... Three years ago, me and my wife um, was buying a life insurance policy from our father-in-law. Uh, we both make a pretty good income, but essentially we're like three years in now, and I've just, I know we've maxed out our 401k, our Roth IRA, but I was talking to my father-in-law, and he essentially said it's like a good tax-free investment um, that we can do with our custom whole life policy. Um, and since we already maxed out our 401k and our Roth IRA, and um, we even like bought a house recently, we're just not sure if that's like the best way moving forward to put our money in, with, at, at least with our extra money. So that's our situation. Um, Victor, you've been married three years, you said? Yeah, we've been married for three, about three years, yeah. Okay, all right. So you're in your mid-20s, I assume. Yeah, me and my wife are both uh, 27, so we got married around 24. Okay. Um, well, uh, I have to give you full disclosure here, okay? I have been trashing whole life policies and people who sell them for 30 years as being one of the biggest possible ripoffs in the financial world. So if you say Dave Ramsey to your father-in-law, his face is going to melt off. <laughs> I know. I, I was afraid of bringing that up to him. I would not, <laughs> I would not suggest you do that. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Dave would suggest you don't do that to yourself with your father-in-law. I don't think there's anything to be gained by that. Um, so, uh, you know, so basically he, you know, you have a guy in your life that loves you and that believes in these products you have a guy on the radio that loves you and says these products are crap and so now you've got to decide as a grown man with your grown wife uh what you guys are going to do and then how to navigate that decision i would never recommend that you stay that you buy something or do something be caught when you're a grown person because your parents said you had to to keep them happy. I would not do that, okay? Um, but I would also not recommend that you uh, damage your relationship with your wife's father. I, I would want mm -hmm. you to be uh, kind and honoring and really avoid an argument if I were you, okay? I have family members, for instance, that I've been married for 41 years, Victor. I have family members that vote the wrong way. Oh, my gosh. They, they don't know how to vote. They pick the wrong party, and they're just dumb about it. And I love them anyway. Oh I love them anyway. And we have family members that have credit cards and that. And, and, and I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't create at Thanksgiving a political argument with people who aren't going to change their minds that I love. Or a financial argument. That I love. Or a financial argument. Yeah. I, I don't oh, – well, I don't give financial advice for pe to people who don't ask for it, and that includes everyone, family included. People who ask, I will tell you. So but for you, Victor, talk so for through Victor, the different wh – wh wh why you don't like whole life insurance as an investment. I, I just – well, he knows. He already knows why I don't like it, don't you? Uh, I know that you, you mentioned that, like, the return over, like, 30 years is minimal. Yeah, it is. Um, and, and when you die, much. when you die, the money that you have in there is gone. They only pay the right. face amount. And right. there is no such thing as a whole life policy that is tax free if it actually got a rate of return. It is tax free because you are the only way you can get your money out is to borrow your own money. And honey, if you go over at the bank and borrow money, they don't charge you taxes on that either. Right. So, of um, course, it's tax free, but it is not a tax and it is not a tax good tax dodge 
It is not a good investment. It is not a good product. Um, but now you, you can research, you know, a bazillion things that we have said about that. And then you've still got this re- deep, horrible Relation. relational problem. And uh, I would recommend that you just be kind. If you decide to not use this product, which, of course, is my recommendation, I would recommend you don't get into an argument with your father-in-law about it. I would just say, you know, we've looked at it, and for us, we've decided to go another direction, and we sure hope, adult to adult, that you'll just respect our decision, even though you think I'm wrong, and I want you to respect my decision. And so, you know, I have a friend who's so stupid that the other day he leased a car, and he's even dumber than that. He drove the car to my house to show it to me, (laughs) okay? But I didn't talk to him about car leases. I just went, hey, my friend has a nice car. I'm going to be happy for him. And he's happy about his car. And he didn't ask my opinion. And so I'm not going to just go adult to adult. I'm going to celebrate his adult decision, even though he did a nice thing in a dumb way. You know? (laughs) Right. I mean, I can yeah, still uh, oh, I can still be friends oh, with the guy. A hundred percent. So I, I want, you, I want sh- you to be kind to your even, father-in-law. Yeah. Even. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is going to be it could be I don't mean I don't know your father-in-law, but if this is what he does for a living, it's a shot to the ego. I mean, like, yeah, right. Is. I mean, if, I mean, if he believes in it so much, like if what we teach you believe so much that if we can't, you know, what I mean, yeah. it's, it's a hard it would be a hard thing. To say uh, they're going to go a different direction from what I not just believe, but the work I do. So just be prepared for that. And you and your wife need to have a lot of conversations, Victor. She's really got to be in this. Yeah. And just really dive in. And you guys have to say, okay, what's best for us? And find the facts because the facts is what's going to prove it to you, Victor. And you both have to be on that same page and say, okay, this is what we're doing. And I, I totally agree with you. Keep it minimal. I mean, like. Just say, yeah. hey, I think we're, we're going to pass. Um, we're gonna... your, your wife has to be able to just look at her dad and Which smile. Which will be hard. A smile and say, I love you, and mm-hmm. we're going a different direction. Yeah. You know? Dave, so, I love you. And we're going a different but direction. But I'm going a different direction. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the thing. You're announcing something on the air? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but it's, yeah, that this is where the, yeah, the relational factor of it is just... It can be messy, yeah, but, and, but but it's also a great practice, Victor, for you, you and your wife. You've got to learn to do this yes, anyway. That's right. Uh, over other things, yes, because you know they're they're, they're the otherwise, leave and cleave otherwise is real. you know they're going to interfere when you get ready to name your first child. They're going to interfere when you get ready to buy your first house. And they all they're do gonna, it out of love, and and no, they do it out of love. <laughs> they do it out of love. Don't pet me. <laughs> I that's, don't interfere in your. That, I don't interfere in your kids' names. No, you names. don't. That's why that would be Mimi that does we that. We don't tell our kids' names until they were born. Because we you get a baby, Mimi eye roll. We hand the baby to the grandparent and we Just say, "Don't name them Moonbeam." This is. A- <laughs> it's all I request. No hippie names. That's all I request. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. The Ramsey Show question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Go to neighborly.com slash Ramsey today to download their winter maintenance checklist. It's free and full of tips to get your home through the colder months with no issues. Again, you can check it out at neighborly.com slash Ramsey. Today's question comes from 
Bethany in Texas. I've been married to a lovely man for 15 years who loves me and adores my son. He is the best dad I could have given to my son. The problem is the finances. I make $180,000 as a nurse practitioner while he makes $30,000. The issue is not really the money, but his lack of ambition to make more of it. He has so much potential. I recently found him a job, which will double his salary, but he's just not interested. I love him very much and I need to know and I need to know how to let him be since I realize I cannot make him want to make more money. I feel like when it comes to the financial part of our marriage, he believes that it is my responsibility. I live in fear knowing that if something happens to me where I die or can no longer work, my family would lose everything. How do I love my husband the way he is since he refuses to change? Brr, Bethany. Um, yeah, the, the biggest problem I see here, Bethany, well, number one, I'm glad that you, just, that you realized you can't control him because you can't. We can't control other people. And the fact that it sounds like you're his mom. I'm like, you went out and found him a job and you're doing all of these things. You're being proactive while he's obviously not wanting it. So, so I would say, again, the money's not the issue here. A lot of it is fear that if something happens, are, are, are you going to be okay? Is your family going to be okay? And so that's the approach I would take with him, not, oh, go double your salary. But it's, hey, this is what it's causing in me. And it's feeling like it's becoming a, it's, it's a wedge between you and him. I mean, it just naturally is. And that fear possibly might be in other parts of your marriage and in your life together. And so um, that's the way I would approach it more versus from the money side, more on what it's causing in you. But yeah, I, I feel like it'll be harsher. I, than, <laughs> I, I, just, I read that you don't respect him. That's what I read. And it has nothing to do with the amount of money he makes that causes respect. His his lack of personal growth and wanting to do better and wanting to be better. He is a lovely, lazy man, is what I read. And, you know, that's a problem because yeah. that's not going to get you, – you're not going to suddenly get okay with that. That's going to deteriorate or improve. It's not going to stay right where it is. And so – uh, I really think that you guys need to sit down with a good marriage counselor, and uh, and then he, the counselor, hopefully can plug him in with some guys, who uh, s some men, who, who are wanting to improve themselves. Um, it's hard to respect a husband or a wife that doesn't, you know, that wants to sit like a blob, and uh, not improve. I don't mind if somebody makes thirty thousand. Uh, as long as they're on their way to doing the best version of themselves. You know, as long as they're on their way to growing, learning, getting better, and so forth. And then the the symptom of that problem is that if you die, I mean, I don't know how y'all are going to lose. Are you lost? You know, if you became disabled, y'all are going to lose everything. You're right. Because you've set yourself up on a uh, an unrealistic situation with incomes dependent on you. So... I just I think I think this has gone on for 15 years and you've tolerated it and held your nose because he's nice. And maybe the guy before that you had the baby with is not nice, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And so uh, I, I don't want him to be not nice, but I do want him to uh, go be somebody. Well, and the fact, Bethany, I feel like he's not hearing you. Right. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. uh, unless you're not saying anything to him which yeah. would be unhealthy too. But I'm like, there, there's something there that you don't, you don't feel heard. You feel like you're on an island by yourself and you're isolated and all the responsibilities on you. And that's not a marriage. A marriage is a team. You both are working together. Now, naturally, always when it comes to these kind of, uh, not this situation, because this is more extreme, but naturally in a marriage, there's always going to be one who's way more excited to do all the budgeting and all the Excel and look at all the numbers and the rate of return. I mean, there's naturally going to be one of you that's more excited than the other with this money stuff. And that's okay. Like that, that is great. But the fact that you guys are not on the same page and you're wanting something else from him that he's not just not even giving you, but also not even giving you the dignity to try to see where you're coming from and meet you even halfway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, any level of that give and take yeah. doesn't seem to be there. So Jay yes. is with us. Jay is in San Diego. Hi, Jay. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. All right. Thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? 
So my wife and I are currently saving up to buy a house. Um, and her grandma, who she's very close to, just offered to give us a gift of $30,000 to put towards the down payment. Uh, my question is, is it, is it ethically okay to take this gift knowing that she has siblings, cousins, and uh, her parents who have not been given that same offer of a gift? It's ethically okay because um, it's not your money. It's her money. She gets to decide what she wants to do with her money. Um, and um, But what you're pointing out is is it may piss them off. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And kind of like justifiably so. Could come up. Yeah. I mean, because there's no intention, as far as you know, for Granny to like give everybody the same amount, right? Yeah, not, not that we know of. I, I think she may, but don't know for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think you. I don't think you have an ethics problem, but you might have a relationship problem when all this comes up to light. Mm -hmm. Because feeling people's not feelings will be hurt, really not by you, but by your grand by her grandmother, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't do anything. Yeah, but uh, um, I mean, I, 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 maybe your wife needs to talk to her grandmother and say, "Hey, what about when so and so finds out and they're angry about this?" Yeah, so her grandma mentioned that she would ideally like to keep it private. I, I just uh, I don't guess know so. if. Yeah. But in my head, it's a gift. I'm like, yeah, to Jay. And I mean, I think you guys just have to be aware that if or when this comes out. Oh, it, it's it's going to come out. It's going to be awkward. It's going to come out when Granny's estate is cleared. Mm -hmm. So, you're, you know, just be prepared that somebody's going to have their feelings hurt later. But does that stop him from taking the gift? No, I don't think so. Um, as long as you're willing to, you know, be ready for your wife's sister to be angry at her dead grandmother someday, how many, right? Oh I mean, gosh, how many, uh, how many grandkids are there? Like, um, there are seven total. Okay. Hmm. Has she, I wonder if she's she done. She wants to keep it private. I know. Yeah. I wonder if she's done other private money gifts. We don't know. Because so. it's private. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, it surface that she had helped out people with uh, paying for college mm -hmm. that was supposed to be private mm -hmm. for some of the cousins, but um, that came to, to light. How? Um, I think, I think the, the parents knew um, that grandma was helping out the grandkids and kind of the parents talked. And, and so then all the other grandkids had found out. And they did not get help then. Okay. So granny is yeah. not exactly worried about everything being even, which is granny's prerogative. That's okay. I don't mind that mm -hmm. a bit. Um, I mean, the only place there's fair is at the tilt a whirl and the cotton candy, right? Uh, so granny gets to do what she wants to do with her money. Yeah. Um, you do not have an ethics problem. But, okay, so how did the cousins, however the cousins all reacted when the parents talked and the word got out about the college money, that is a predictor of how they're going to react when this comes out. Mm. Are you ready for that? If you're ready for that, game on. And the game, and, and as yeah. long as this is truly a gift and there are no uh, strings attached of any kind, it's not a loan and Granny has doesn't get to pick out the paint colors or something, she's not in control here of your house purchase because of 30K. If there's no control freak stuff going on, no strings attached, and you're willing to accept the blowback that will look similar to when the other gifts came to light then that that's where you are you're okay with that if it's not worth thirty thousand for the drama then walk away this is the ramsey show Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y-Refi. They're not 
a debt settlement company, and they're not connected to a bank. Why refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Why refi you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. One of the things you ought to notice, and you'll notice it as a pattern through this show, some hours more than other hours, but certainly in a given week or a given month, you'll see it all the time. Personal finance, one of the things we've discovered at Ramsey years ago that has set us apart from the financial, professional financial goobers, um, is that we figured out personal finance is 80% behavior. It's only 20% head knowledge. The mathematics of becoming wealthy are really about the sixth grade level. If you can do multiplication, you can understand compound interest. And so it, it's, it's, it's within your grasp. You don't have to be a, a PhD in mathematics to do it. But the problem with understanding that personal finance is 80% behavior is then you have to think, okay, what affects behavior? And what you're going to always see woven through this show, and you've seen it in the last few callers here, uh, and even the emailer, is behavior is all about relationships. It's not all about it, but I mean, it's one of the relationships, your marriage relationship, your kids, your your grandmother wants to give you a secret gift <laughs> of not, that your cousins don't know about. I mean, see, none of this has anything to do with math. If you're just doing math, it's like 30,000 free dollars. Yes. Right, right. But check yes. Check as yes. As George Strait would yeah. want you to do. There you go. Check yes or and no. so, check yes. I mean, you know, mutual funds averaging 11.8% rate of return. Check yes. Boom. Just like that. You don't, have, you don't have to think about this stuff. It's just a math answer instantly. The problem is, is that it's not a math answer. You have to anticipate and consider the relational, the spiritual, the emotional, psychological, any components of behavior. If you don't consider those, considering this whole thing is 80% behavior. In other words, the number one thing that screws up people's ability to build wealth is their friends and family or them or your personal behavior yeah it's you it's not your lack of knowledge of some sophisticated financial product it's not that you don't know the secrets of the rich it's your freaking dysfunctional family that put the fun and dysfunctional and that and now throws, you're living out of that <laughs> and that screws up your wealth building more than anything else yeah well i mean it's it's the perspective you have to have in putting money in its proper place in your life and when you realize that money is a tool as i say on my show to create a life you love money is the is the tool for it right but it's your life. Your life surrounds it or it surrounds your life. I'm like, it is the thing that touches every area of your life. And when you just try to do math, you're trying to make it its own thing over here. And it's not. It is It is built into everything. It's built into soccer re registrations. If you have the money to do soccer for your kids for the fall, it has to do with family trips. That might have I mean, just happened. It yeah. Ha yeah, it has to. It flows through life. It's, it's the thing, the currency we have to have to live our life. It's not just the numbers. And so when you realize that, you realize, wow, it does touch every area of our life and yeah and the problem with it is it's us we say that all the time it's the guy in the mirror you shave with is what you say yep that's exactly right and larry burkett used to say that money problems are not the problem they're the symptom yep of something else that's going on in your life and yep. so including when i went broke it was not because there was some colossal conspiracy against dave it's because dave signed up 
for a first class ticket on the stupid ship and went on the entire cruise. There's no question. I mean, stop at islands. every port, every port on the stupid ship, and said and, yes. Yes, I will, I will go. you know that's it. We were there, baby, and, and so. But it was the behaviors that put me there, that mm-hmm. left me open to, and and the character flaws, for that matter. Not yeah. not of lack of integrity or and something, I'll but say other this. things. And which Jade Warshaw just wrote a book on this, but your mindset too, right? You believed a certain way of dealing with money. You believe certain principles. We're going to get you rich. You believe this way. And so also shifting your mindset and learning new ways to handle your money. Though that, that head knowledge is important. That 20% of learning what to do with your money is still key. But why you do what you do with money is important too, which is the behavior. Yeah, it, it's – and that's one of the reasons I get so uh, – come down so hard on these people that are hope stealers. Mm-hmm. out there running around going, well, you just can't. In America today, it's there's systemic this and systemic that. Well, there is. There's also systemic success. It's everywhere around you. Look, there's systemic wealth building. It happens everywhere. And it's the people that plug into that system yep. instead of believing your system of socialism, uh, anarchy is going to solve the problem, which is a bunch of crap. It's just you're frustrated and you feel stuck and you lost your hope. Mm-hmm. But don't spread that stuff and tell, well, you can't, it's impossible for the Gen Z. They're very frustrated because well, they a, can't be a millionaire. Yes, they can be a millionaire. They can be a millionaire by the freaking time they're 30 if they get their crap together. Hey, I just was with a girl. She's uh, 15 years old. 15 years 15. old. 15. Yep. Opened up a Roth IRA when she was like 10 years old because she started working mm-hmm. in her dad's company and she started doing all this and she did the calculations. She told me she'll be a millionaire by 30. <laughs> so I was like, Well, there you go. Now, she had parents who were teaching her and helping her and encouraging this, right? So she's in an environment that that's beautiful, but I'm like... And so when she goes into some leftist communist college professor's (laughs) economics class who says you can't do this stuff, she's going to hold up her little Roth IRA and go, you know... Yeah. Ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding. Or scrolling TikTok. And we, we played a TikTok video here last week of a guy and he's like the middle class. You have to make $120,000 to be middle class. Oh, what a moron. And he walked through all the numbers, you know, and some of you are like, but, you know, he had like, well, and you only have $625 left. I don't know. I don't know. And we were like, oh, my gosh, what if you invested that? Right. Like it's the hopes. It's the attitude. It's the attitude behind it. So I think you're exactly right. When you yeah. don't believe you can. And when you teach you other can't. people that they can't, that puts you in the evil bucket. The hope stealers are evil. When you steal people's hope, that's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, I've been accused of being a dream killer because people call up with bizarre crap and I tell them not to do it. Uh, that's not a dream killer. That is a nightmare avoidance yes. instructor. Yeah. That's different than killing a dream. I'm killing a nightmare. So, But, but there's a difference in that. There's a, instead of saying, no matter what you do, you're screwed. That's right. That's right. And, and you're not. You're not. You don't have to drive that car. You don't have to wear that shirt. You don't have to carry that purse. You don't have to wear those shoes. You do not have to do any of that to be a quality human and to build wealth. You can do, as a matter of fact, the less of a bunch of that stuff I just listed you do, the faster you're going to build wealth because all of those things are consumption. And so, you know, this, this idea that uh, you can get away from, you can ignore your personal character, you can ignore toxic relationships, toxic work environments, and still get ahead, that you can ignore the fact that your spouse is spending money faster than you can make it. That's a relationship breakdown. You cannot ignore those things. We did not interview a single millionaire that said, I became a millionaire in spite of my spouse. You know? Yeah. I... I, you know, I did did talk to one guy. He said I lost 110 pounds. I divorced her. But <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> he, he fixed that. But I'm oh my gosh. But it, he did. You or can't, she lost you can't 250 carry them. pounds. You can't carry. Um, I know, but she. You can't carry them into it. You can't yeah, carry them into that's it. That's right. That's right. You got. They, they, everybody's got to be working together. It's hard. These, are, these are things we know. And and again. That's not a hope stealer comment. That's a that's to me. That's the challenge that if you find yourself in a situation and you are married and you guys are on completely separate pages, let this be a challenge to say, hey, get on the same page, not just to build wealth, but your quality of your relationships. Yeah, again, absolutely. money's just a tool. Your the quality of the relationship will be better. Like all of this fits together. And so it is it's it's 
Oh, it's so crucial. It's it, so crucial. You know, if you don't get the the elements of behavior going, you there is not a product, there's not a mutual fund, there's not a technique, there's not a, a TikTok video that's going to help you. If you don't get the th- the elements of behavior, your spiritual walk, your emotional and psychological health, your ability to set boundaries with toxic people in and around you, including your family, your quality of your marriage, the unity, the fact that we're in lockstep and both working towards a high definition vision dream that we want to live together you cannot avoid that stuff as a matter of fact if you do all of that stuff and do some of the math wrong you'll still be okay but you can't do the math all right and do all that wrong and make it it won't work this is the ramsey show Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost sharing ministry, but listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses, but we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Vincent is in New York City. Hi, Vincent. How are you? Good afternoon. Yourself? Better than I deserve. How can we help? So, uh, I was just to piggyback off what you were saying a few moments ago about uh, behavior being 80%. Um, in my own particular situation, I'm up to baby step number six. And, Great. Uh, about my own particular behavior towards baby step number six, I'm at a bit of a, um, we'll say a question mark, if you will, in the sense that I took a step backward. My wife and I were homeowners and uh, no debt at all. We have a substantial portfolio and I take it a step backward from aggressively paying down our mortgage, which is at an interest rate of two point uh, eight, seven, five percent. And instead I use that excess funds that I could be paying towards the mortgage for investments. And I save and invest that money rather than put it towards the mortgage. Now I'm wondering if given our individual circumstance, if that is, uh, an acceptable alternative, if we're not putting it towards the mortgage. Acceptable alternative is a big phrase. Um, yeah, it's acceptable. I mean, you know, you're you're investing, you're not consuming, you're doing that. Is it what we would do? No, we would not do that. Um, right. But the uh, but but you know, are you, you know, are you going to end up broke because you're doing that? No, no, you're not. Um, but uh, the the fallacy in your uh, theory is that uh, if you the way you can test a theory like this it is um multiply it 100x and see how it makes you feel okay so how much is your mortgage balance i have two, 299 left on it 299,000 okay. so if somebody came up and said uh i'll loan you 30 million dollars at 2% would you do that or does that take your breath away, or does that take your breath away a little bit yeah, I, I would not do that. Okay, because and the reason it takes your breath away a little bit is the, only when I expand it that far did you feel that debt equals risk. Right now, That's, it's so manageable and so small in your world, 
as a ratio in your world that you're not sensing that there's any risk associated with it. Um, yes. And, and uh, another way to prove that would be to go the other direction. If you paid off your mortgage today mm -hmm. and you had the opportunity to go get another mortgage a year from now at 2%, would you take a paid for house and go borrow money at 2%? Most Absolutely people will not. say no. But if you're, if you're truly believing the math that you pitched, you would say yes, right? You there? Yes. No, I'm with you. I understand. I, so my theory, I think goes towards as well that maybe over the course of time, if I continue this long term, maybe I'll generate a better return. You will. The long term investing. You will. You will. But you're, you're, the, the tightness between your shoulder blades because you have a mortgage on the home where your children live and your dog lives and your cat lives and your wife lives is, uh, is not measurable in math. And so when you pay off a mortgage, people breathe deeper. They have a different feeling about the grass in the backyard when they walk through it without their shoes on. And those are quantifiable only over an, an, a large amount of money and a large amount of time. Mm -hmm. You don't sense it, though, because I'm guessing you have a portfolio, probably, Vincent, of $10 million or more. And so this 300000 owed on your house is chump change. It's really not in your world. It's not enough to make you upset one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So, but I'll stick with our process and because it's brought me great joy to have no mortgage. And if you have the non-retirement assets, which I suspect you do to pay off that mortgage today, I'd pay it off today. But I'm okay. We'll still be friends if you want to keep a 2% mortgage. You know, it's, it's funny. just not what we teach or believe or how we live. Yeah. And in the same example but lowered some so not for vincent but other people listening like we have some friends and and they make great money like they do totally fine and they've always had car payments but they can i mean it's such a small part of their overall world They're like that's oh, not a big deal it's not a big deal well last year for the first time they bought a car with cash and they're kind of joking with me it's like okay we're gonna just try it your way let's see and we were texting like two months later and he said in our group text he was like i will never get a car payment again he was like i never realized what it felt like to have, even if you can manage the payment, what it felt like to have that leave every month. And then the fact with this car, we're going to drive it for so much longer because usually when the loan was up, we'd get a new car and we'd start back in this cycle. And I didn't realize that we were in this. It's like this light bulb turns on when you actually live it. Yeah. And and that's the thing. That's that, it. Guy, I'm like, that guy, you know, is a sophisticated guy you're talking about. Oh, he's yeah. not a, oh very smart. He's not a. They make a lot of I mean, serious they're great. money. Yeah, like they're serious great. Money. They're great. It's not that big of a deal. So to Vincent, you know, what we're expecting or assuming about you is it's not that big of a $300,000 yeah. mortgage. It's not. But I'm telling you, when you do it, you're like, oh, crap. I never knew that's really what it was. I didn't realize what it I was carrying. Yeah. What I was carrying around and didn't even know because it's just normal. So yeah. I would pay it off, Vincent. If you get mad at us, then just. Get a HELOC or something. Get, yeah. You can get back into debt. If well, interest know. rates come down, get you a new mortgage if you don't like being debt free. That's right. That's right. But I'd pay it off tomorrow. That's what I would do. Hey, it's a good discussion, though. Thank you for calling in. John's with us. John's in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hi, John. How are you? Hi, Dave. Um, I wanted to ask you what you would do if you were me. So I'm 42 years old, and I've realized that I've been an idiot with my money. <laughs> Uh, for the first half of my life, I spent my money on stuff that was ridiculous. I didn't invest it. And life smacked me in the face a few months ago and let me know that I need to start thinking about my financial future now. Otherwise, when I get old, I'm going to be in trouble. So what, what, what smacked you? I'm curious. What was the wake-up call? Not having any money at all. Uh, I don't own any property. I mean, what, but, what, but what, why did it suddenly be a thing? You said a few months ago, life smacked me. Did a certain thing happen? Well, um, basically, uh, all I know to say is that uh, um, I just didn't have any money. You just got disgusted. I, okay, that's fine. That's, good. that's a good I answer. with myself. Okay, so I what's your question? How can we myself. help you? How can we help you? So I make around eighty thousand a year. Mm -hmm. um, I've got I've got about twelve thousand dollars worth of debt, and I'm basically caught between two paths. I know it won't take me long to pay this debt off. Good. But I'm trying to decide if I should then focus on saving for a house and paying for it in cash, not taking on any debt, because I've been reading your book, The Money Makeover, and I I absolutely detest 
debt now, and I don't want to have any part of it anymore for the rest of my life. But I thought about either just buying the house. Where are you living now? Paying for it in cash. I'm sorry? Where are you living now? Uh, I live in Bluffton, Indiana. No, I mean, what, are, what, what are you, you renting an apartment? You live in your friend's basement? Where do you live? I mean, what kind of living situation? I rent, I, I rent an apartment. Okay. All right. All right. And what price range home would you buy? And out of $80,000, how quick can you pay cash for one? Well, if I really buckle down and been saving hard, which is what I have been doing, I could probably save 50000 a year. So I'm thinking in four years, I could probably pay cash for 100000 to maybe $150,000 house. Four years times 50 is 200000 Yeah. Well, what I was going to say was I could save an additional fifty for uh, like an emergency fund for expenses on the house that may come up you know, down the road, a hot water heater goes out or, or whatever. I love it. Do the it. Second, yeah, my, the second option I thought, I know the trucking business has been doing this for 15 years. The other option I thought about doing was buying my own semi-truck, paying for that in cash, because being an owner-operator, uh, provided I had the right emergency fund in place, uh, I can make some serious money very, very quickly. Yeah. I think I probably would do both. Pay cash for a house and pay cash for a truck. It's just a matter of which one to do first. And then you can I decide that. I'm okay either way. I love your wake-up call, though. I love where you are. Your head's in a really good space, John. You're going to be in a great shape in about four years. It's going to be great. Way to go, man. of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. The phone number here is 888-825-5225. Rachel Cruz, multiple number one best-selling author, Ramsey personality, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour. And my daughter is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Nicole is in Salt Lake City. Hey, Nicole, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, I'm so grateful to actually get to speak to both of you, especially another working mom. Um, I'm concerned with whether or not I would be harming my family's financial future if I take an extended maternity leave with my second child. Um, I did. I didn't take that with my first child, and I've had a lot of regret about that. And my husband and I are considering whether or not um, I could take a year or two off of work. Um, if I did, we wouldn't be able to put as much toward our debt snowball as we have. Um, we've paid off about two hundred seventeen thousand dollars since oh twenty twenty. Yeah. What but do you, what do, you do, another, Nicole? Um, I'm an attorney. What do you make? Um. Net take home for both of us. No, I said, what do you make? I I think my net take home is one twenty. What about your husband? Um, his is about maybe sixty, I think. No, it was seventy last year. His his net was seventy. What's he do? Um, he owns some some car washes. Okay. Um, so you're going to so, cut your income by sixty sixty five percent. Yes. Okay. And then we would still have $86,000 of my student loan left. It's our only debt besides our mortgage that we still have left to pay on, but we've, we've been paying on it. Um, and so it's going to set us back. We'll be able to make the minimum payments and maybe a little bit more um, with distributions, but maybe inconsistently. And um, I guess I'm just I'm concerned because we started a family later in life. 
uh, we'll both be in our early 40s by the time I wanted to go back to work. Um, and so obviously having that debt and then having not invested that long, I'm just concerned this is going to cause harm long term. Um, I kind of want to like relieve you from from that, Nicole. I don't think it's harm long term. I mean, I think, yeah, your your goals are going to shift if your family goals shift. And that's a reality. Um but it's not like you're putting your family in massive danger here, right? I mean, I have some other ideas that we can talk through here in a second, but um, this, so many women feel this, and especially since you're the breadwinner of, that I have to be the one to save everything, and it's up to me, and I'm gonna put my family in danger. I'm, you know, like this language that you're using, it's, uh, it's very heavy, and I think it's, and what I would say is that it's, um, you're putting more pressure on yourself than needs to be there. Yes, getting out of debt is a huge goal. And it's one that I want you guys to work towards and one that you've made such significant progress to. But like we said, uh, the last hour of the show, we, we talked so much about how debt is a tool to create, or I'm sorry, money is a tool to create a life that you love. And you guys have to look at your family unit and your family is a priority, Nicole. I mean, your family is one that you're like, okay, what what is best for us right now? And as a mom, I get it. Like that... I mean, I pulled back from work after my third because I was like, I just, I want to be home more. And so all of that is real. Now, does that mean we want to stop everything you guys have been doing and the progress you've made? No, I wouldn't suggest that either. And so I think a, I think a wonderful middle ground, Nicole, for you is to have, because I mean, an attorney, I'm like, that is such a stressful job and the hours you work. I mean, I can't even imagine. So what does life look like if Nicole stays home and her career shifts and your career looks different for a year or two? What does that look like? And so I would start, you know, having that kind of conversation of, and I don't know this world, Nicole, so you probably can direct me better in this conversation from this point on in this sense. But is there work to be done that you could do, outsource your skills at some level, some degree that is significantly less stress and less time than what you've been doing and still be bringing in some kind of flow, right? To, I, to I would, offset the student loans that are yeah. there because of law school. Right. You know, right. so let's use the law degree to clean yeah. up the law degree mess. But does it have, does but your life have to not, look like Maybe it? not in a traditional right. attorney setting. Right. What Rachel's saying. And Rachel says she pulled back. She pulled back. She's not, uh, but she's not out of the saddle either. She's, you know, her social footprint has grown. Uh, she's still doing appearances. She's still on this show, still launched a number one best-selling kids book a few months ago. Uh, and so, and did all of that on, you know, l less than a full-time hour slate. In an office. Yep, yeah. Correct. Yeah. In, in the office. And so, um, you know, there, but we just shifted around how, what we're doing with her brand and how we're doing that um uh for a season here while the little one is there and so for you that's what i would present to you what does yeah. what does that shift look like right because there is a you know there's a level of responsibility that you guys have financially right that you have to fulfill you have to make these payments and getting out of debt as you know uh lifts so many burdens right if you didn't have this debt then you could have the option to stay home full time if you wanted right so um but but I do yeah, think, I Nicole, think I, that there's something there that there still can be money to be brought in. I think you have to think creatively. And that's probably what I would encourage you to do, to have something. And then he, honestly, Nicole, will probably have to step up his game if you guys keep this momentum uh, with paying off debt. I just don't want you to think it's an all or nothing. Yeah, Things and can and, shift. And um, harm is not the right word. Rachel's right. That's an overstated word, a, a mom guilt word. In this, because mm -hmm. you the you guys can't win, okay? You get mom guilt if you're at home because you sh you feel like you should be at work, and if you're at work, you get mom guilt because you feel like you should be at home. I mean, it's a no win, and there's always some moron on either side of the coin telling you <laughs> you should be doing the other one, right? And yeah. so, um, and, and so we're not going to be either one of those, but probably some kind of a uh, a change, a hybrid approach, because I I there's a part of me that says okay, the the you went to all the trouble and the expense and the debt to be a lawyer, to go cold turkey doing nothing with that, while you've still got 80000 of it outstanding, that doesn't feel right either. Okay? Yeah. But, uh, but also not addressing this need that you've got, this desire you've got to be at home doesn't feel right. And so I, I think somewhere in there along Rachel's suggestion is the, is the proper 
answer, but I, I want to take the, I'm with Rachel, I want to take the, the guilt thing of, are you doing irreparable harm? No, you're not doing irreparable harm. You just kind of got to think through, I spent a lot of who I am mm -hmm. in money, time, debt, effort, brain power to be a lawyer. And to cut that off completely, even for just two years, feels pretty extreme. Yeah, and Nicole, and everyone's obviously created so differently, but considering what you've done and, and as you listed all that, Dave, I was thinking like, you know, you might look up in six months and be like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm crazy. I'm not happy because I need some output. You know, so you may find that in you, how you're wired, you're going to want to do something as well. And yeah. so that's that's a possibility too. So you're doing great, Nicole. You, you, you're you're going to so be good. okay. You're going to do good. You got, you're asking the right questions. Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day -day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at NetSuite.com slash Ramsey. That's NetSuite.com slash Ramsey. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. What percentage of Americans have at least $1,000 in their savings account? This will blow your mind. 36% of all Americans have absolutely zero in savings. One, over one in three. Another 19%, one in five, have less than $1,000 saved. That's 55% don't have $1,000. It's crazy out there, y'all. Did you guys know that uh, Stupid has a gravitational pull? That you can get stuck in an orbit around Stupid? You know how you break a, an orbit? You know how you break the cycle? And a burst of energy. That's how you break an orbit. And if you're ready for a change, we're going to help. We're doing the biggest live stream we've ever done. Right now, there are over 400,000 people registered to view our live stream tomorrow night, Thursday, January the 11th at 7 p.m. Central. It's by far the biggest one we've ever done. It's called Break the Cycle. It's Dr. John Deloney, Rachel Cruz, George Camel, Jade Warshaw, me, Navigating Money Anxiety, bad money habits that keep you stuck, practical money tips that actually work, and we're giving away $10,000, $1,000 to 10 different people, a total of $10,000 to people who are actually viewing this tomorrow night. If you're on the live stream, you're going to be automatically signed up to be a possible winner, no purchase necessary. The whole thing's free. RamseySolutions.com slash break the cycle. RamseySolutions.com slash break the cycle. Rachel, what you and Jade have put together, the things y'all are going to be working on, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. We're, we're really going to talk through 
what it looks like to change, right? And that change is uncomfortable, but what are the actual tactical things you can do to break the cycle? And and yeah, and one of those is is budgeting and, and every dollar is a huge, uh, our budgeting app, it's a huge tool. It's a, a huge proponent in your life and your financial life to walk with you and for you to have that's so convenient on your phone to really do this. I mean, like there really is something about being proactive with your money and the budget is really the best way to do that. And, and, and every dollar is that. So we're gonna kind of talk through a bunch of ideas including that one and it's going to be it's going to be a good night dalton is with us dalton is in knoxville hey dalton welcome to the ramsey show hey thank y'all for taking my call sure what's up hey um my wife is scheduled to graduate from uh, psych nurse practitioner school a year from now in january uh right now we're about forty thousand dollars in debt from our student loans but that's all that we have everything else is paid off and uh, after she graduates, uh, she's working part-time for a company that she plans to go full-time for. And uh, they have a program where if you work for them for two years, uh, they'll pay $50,000 off of your student debt. And so my question was, should we wait two years and let them pay off the 50000 and And uh, we just make sure it stays below 50000 and uh, Or we hurry up and pay it off beforehand. She graduates in January. When do they give you the forty thousand? Two they years later. Give you fifty thousand. Two, two years later. Now that you don't have fifty thousand in debt, you said they pay off up to fifty, so it's forty. Yeah, well, we got forty thousand dollars right now. I think after she graduates, we're after we do the math, it's going to be about seventy, seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay, so you called me up about getting out of debt while you're going further into debt. <laughs> Uh, I guess I did. What do you make? Uh, I make about $40,000 a year. Is she working? Uh, she's working part-time, so I'll make around maybe $10,000 this year. And uh, we got two kids, and so. What are they going to pay her as a psych nurse? Uh, starting off $118,000. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, so it really doesn't matter. Um, you're not going to pay anything on the debt between now and the time she graduates. If we got, if you really rolled up your sleeves, you might just avoid adding so much mm -hmm. to the debt. Maybe keep it down yeah. two fifty instead of go to seventy five. Uh, you know, you guys really, really, really buckle down and not go so far in debt. Um, but there's not. So the question really comes up: When she goes to work there, making a hundred, do we wait two years from then for them to pay off fifty, or do we just use her hundred to pay off the fifty the first year? Yeah. So the we, question uh, really ain't anything. Uh, it doesn't even come up until a year from now. Yeah. Here's what I would do. I would immediately, when she goes to work, save up the $50,000 and put it in a separate account and let it sit there. A okay. savings account. And then if this place is hell on earth and she needs to walk out the door, you can write a check yourself and pay it off. Mm -hmm. And you've not got golden handcuffs and she has to stay in a horrible situation for two years. All right. Because you guys are used to living on 40 or 50 with her 10,000 part time. And you're getting ready to go to 150 when she comes out. So you ought to be able yeah. to save 50 really fast. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes complete sense. Yeah. So I want you to do the same thing as getting out of debt and just pretend like you don't have that savings account over there. And then if she does stay two years, obviously they're going to write a check, pay it off, and you've got an extra 50 grand laying around. Yeah. Yeah, because usually, Dalton, in these situations, what we hear is you have to be in the job for seven plus years or like this crazy extended amount of time for this kind of benefits. We hear that a lot. And that's what I would not advise. If it's a long period of time, I'm just on my own. I'm going to pay it off. So I have yeah. the autonomy over my life. Two years is really that, that's it's encouraging. Yeah. yeah. And how much she's going to be making right out of the gate. I'm like, holy crap. It's like she has a really great deal. I mean, you guys are in a really really blessed situation in that sense that she's 
found, you know, who she's working for yeah. and all of it. I mean, like it's there's Incredible so many upsides. Money. Yeah, yeah, for you guys. So that's a gr- I think that's a great idea. Try to cash flow the next year, Dalton. Really set yourself a goal that we're not going to go any further. And yeah. and then continue that goal of like, this is what we're going to use to pay this off if something were to happen. So it still gives you an out. There's still this kind of like we can eject if we need to. So and maybe she, I'm praying she loves it. She's getting paid well. They're going to pay off the debt in two years. And I'm praying she stays with it. And, and it's yeah. great. But don't don't trap yourself and, in and somebody l- else's world. Let's say you don't go 75, but you end up 57 thousand in debt when she graduates. OK. Well, I would say, obviously, pay the seven off immediately and then put the 50 aside and then let them pay off that 50 within the two years. Um, and I, I really want um, to have uh, as much detail and as much in writing from these folks yeah. that this is going to occur also. I don't want some vague promise that a recruiter made and it's never been written down anywhere. It needs to be part of her signing bonus, her, her, uh, you know, her employment agreement when she comes on board or whatever else, that there's a written promise to do yes. this. Uh, because some, I don't want someone having a memory problem later. That's a great point. <laughs> Such a great point. Juliet is with us in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Juliet, I'm going to bring you up after this coming break because I just looked down and saw the clock and I don't want to answer your question in 15 seconds. That probably wouldn't be a thing. So let's distinguish because, Rachel, you made the point on his call. The seven-year plan, the 10-year plan to get somebody to pay your debt off? No. A two-year plan, yes, but that's not a government plan there. Mm -hmm. That's a private hospital that is desperate for psych nurses. And so one of the things they're throwing out... One of the benefits. It's a benefit. It's It's one of the things they're throwing out is a corporate benefit. Yep. It's not a a failed Biden plan. This is a real company. That's why I said get it in writing thing. Okay? And then you're going to be okay if you do that. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Hey, guys, we could use your help around here. If you want to help us out, here's how you can do it. You can subscribe to the show. If you're a YouTube follower or a podcast follower, click the subscribe button, the follow button, that kind of thing. You can share the show. If that particular platform has the ability for you to share by a share button, do it. If not, just click the link out, cut the link out, and uh, send it to somebody on an email and say, hey, We've been listening to these Ramsey guys, and it's uh, I'm learning something. So spread the word for us. We would appreciate it. Leave us a nice five-star review. Subscribe, share, follow, like, all those kinds of things. It helps a bunch. Uh, we know it's helping because we uh, just hit number one on Apple Podcasts of all of them. And uh, it's kind of crazy, but we've had over a billion 
downloads now with a B. A billion with a B. It's just mind-blowing. But thank you. It's your fault. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you. Juliet is with us in Greenville, South Carolina, as promised. Hi, Juliet. How can we help? Well, I wanted to ask your opinion. Me and my husband last year had about $250,000, and we invested at, um, in a CD at our credit union, and it has matured. And we're wondering if we should go back to the same um, thing, invested in a CD, and, um, or to look elsewhere. And we're we really don't want to take a risk with the money. So we're both 80 years old, and we didn't feel like we wanted to take a risk in the stock market. Mm-hmm. But we wanted your opinion of what you thought we should do. I would go right back and renew that CD. You would? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't pay That's very much. It's not a very good long-term investment, but it gives you a lot of peace. And you told me three times you didn't want risk. And I heard you. And I heard you. Okay. 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 So I'm I'm 63, and I don't have any CDs. All of mine is invested in mutual funds in the stock market. But I'm comfortable with that risk. And I can tell by talking to you that if you did that with your 250000 you would be awake at night scared. You're probably exactly right. And the last thing I want to cause is a sweet 80-year-old person to be awake at night. (laughs) Okay. Now, let me ask you the second question. Is any of these, do you think that any of these investment companies, uh, would their CDs pay more than the credit union? They might, but it's not enough to fool with. Okay. Uh, in other words, what are you getting on this CD? What are they offering you when you renew it? Well, I think um, I think she said five point five. That's not bad at all. Okay. Okay. If you got if you got six, but you were dealing with people you didn't know and trust, like your credit union, again, yes. again, this is about sleeping well at night, and I wouldn't lose. I wouldn't go jumping around and get a half a percent more and lose sleep. Right. Because you're very okay. you're very comfortable with this credit union, and the NCUA does have a two hundred fifty thousand dollar guarantee on this, so you're covered on your guarantee. And uh, if the credit union failed, in other words, like an FDIC, but the uh, with a credit yeah. union, it's not FDIC; it's called the NCUA. But anyway, yeah, you're you're fine there. I, I personally would just tell you to stay right there. Okay, that's what I wanted your opinion. So that's, yeah. but that's you need. But I'll, I'll say it again for the sake of our listeners. That's not because it's the five and a half percent is a great long term investment because it's really not. It's because no. I want you to be able to sleep, and five and a half percent is a good CD. And we're do- talking about your comfort here, not about a twenty year investment horizon. That's right. Okay, so if. Juliet called. She's 80, 80 years old, and she says, "Dave, we got two hundred fifty thousand dollars. We just cashed out the CD. Which, what's the best? What would you do if you were us?" And she wasn't fearful of the risk. Juliet was. She was nervous. You know, again, I appreciated you taking care of her because, she, yes, we don't want her to be stressed out. But if somebody is eighty years old with two hundred fifty thousand dollars and they're not worried about it as much, what would you do at eighty years old? Well. With some of my investments at 63, it would also be more true at 80. I'm already realizing that some of the investing I'm doing is not for me because I'll never touch it. Yeah. It's really for the next generation. Yeah. And so uh, you guys, the Ramsey, you know, the Ramsey kids are going to be getting this stuff. And so when I make an investment decision now, unless it's a five or a 10 year horizon, if I'm buying something out there long term, I'm obviously thinking about you know, the next generation after I'm gone. And so, uh, you know, if we're to superimpose that on her situation, if you've got 250000 you're putting it into a CD, that tells me you're not living on it because that CD is not paying you monthly. Mm-hmm. So you don't need a return on that. So they've got other money yeah. that they're living on. Mm-hmm. So they very likely 
uh, unless they, something comes up and they need this money. Sure, sure. But they very likely are doing their investing for the next generation mm-hmm. at 80 years old. And so if you took that mindset, it'd be easy to put it in mutual funds because you might not be here five years, but, you know, the next generation will be. Sure, yeah. And you could leave, they could leave it alone. Just, you know, we're going to dump 250000 in mutual funds and then... When we pass, it'll pass to the kids. Yeah, yeah. And you, know, uh, you never, you never touch it. You're not really investing for yourself at that point. Yes. Okay. So here's here's what's funny. I was telling you during the break. Winston and I sat with our Smart Investor Pro this morning. Mm-hmm. We do it once a year and kind of like look at all the investments. And uh, I was actually telling uh, someone out in the lobby, Avery, she's 15, and she was talking about her Roth IRA. Mm-hmm. And I told her that uh, I looked at when when I started mine. Mm-hmm. And when I started working for you guys, mm-hmm. even in high school and all of it, and, and as we're talking through all the numbers and looking at everything, you know, our investment pro, he was like, okay, this is good. And, you know, I'm here and here and here. And he's like, and what's crazy is what you guys are investing here. You probably won't touch. It'll be for your kids. And so as you're saying this to me, your daughter, you're investing money that you won't touch. I'm investing money I probably won't touch. And that, you guys, is a family tree change. Like when we yeah. say... Yeah. That what you're doing today... When you don't need the money to live you, or to you do the things you to, want to do. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to pass that on. And when you give dignity to your kids' parents out there with little ones and teach them to work and, and you know be able for them to live out the principles on their own, regardless of what their parents are doing... Th- And then they teach it to their kids, right? It's just this big, big legacy snowball effect that just keeps turning over and over. When everyone does their part (laughs) in each generation, it just keeps it going down the line. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. And it's really um, encouraging all to you out there that are on baby steps one, two, and three, and you're really grinding it out. Well, and if you you, blink, you start to do this. If you blink, it'll be 20 years because that Roth IRA you did as a teenager is 20 years old. Mm Mm-hmm. And... That money that you were working and, you know, I filed a tax return. I paid the taxes on it. and I, It was you know, an $800 initial investment. Yep. Isn't that funny? He pulled it up. It was $800. Yeah. That, that, that was what your earned income was that year. Yeah. And that's what you're allowed to report. And I put that in into a Roth. And then the next year, I think it was probably 1500 or something or whatever. I mean, several years in a row, we did that with each of you as you worked. And um, But, I mean, 20 years later, psh- yeah. It's amazing where that becomes. It's great. It's crazy. It's great. Lindsay is in Illinois. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Um, so my question for you is if I should keep the house that I have or if I should get um, sell it and buy a less expensive home. How much so is your house payment? Th- um, it is 525 a month. How are you going to get less expensive than 525 a month? Well, that doesn't include my homeowner's insurance or my real estate taxes. That's yeah, okay. So How much do you make, Lindsay? I make 40000 40000 Is there something wrong with the house you're in? No, it's just very big, and um, it's, I have a hard time paying the real estate taxes. How much are your real estate taxes? 3500 That's $300 a month which makes you have an $800 house payment making 40 k You ought to be able to do that on a budget. Sounds like you've got debt in other places that are causing the strain or you're not budgeting, one of the two. Your real estate's not your problem. This is The Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling authors, author of several books, including the latest kids' book. I'm glad for what I have. Yeah. And it blew up, and we've 
sold out of them. We've got the reorder back in now. We're back on... Uh, Amazon's still sold out. Amazon. So come to RamseySolutions.com to get a copy. Now. And just to do a shout out, I know this is a show all over the world, but... I'm doing a book signing at the Books a Million in Mount Juliet on Saturday. I'm you gonna, are? Yep. I'm going to do a two readings. An old-fashioned book signing. I am. I know. At wow. 11 o'clock Central Time. So we, we I know. We used to do those before the Fauci pandemic. I want. That's so cool. I do. I love a book signing. That's, I love hanging out with people. I want to. So. That's anyways, cool. I know. The Mount Juliet Books a Million reached out and we were like, yeah, let's do some. Local book signing, so and books all you in the books Nashville. Books a great company, too. I've done a bunch with them over the years. Yeah, so anyone in the Nashville area, come Very out on cool. Saturday. And the Mount Julie, that's got a fa fairly new store out there, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. um, area yeah. out there now. Yeah, beautiful. Or not now. It always is, Mount Julie. It always has been. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I mean, it's all kind of blown up, and there's a bunch of new stuff. Yes, yeah? yes. Yeah. Rachel is in Sacramento. Hi, Rachel. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. How can we help? <laughs> Um, so my husband and I own a house that faces a pretty busy road, um, and we've been discussing what the next plan of this um, part of our life is, um, and there's been a project on this road um, to widen it, and um, so You're I... You're kidding. There's road our, construction in California? I know, right? <laughs> the steak flower is an it's orange cone. It's got to be beautiful, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be beautiful. Um, in any case, I were concerned, or I am concerned, I'm more concerned than my husband, about eventually getting um, an imminent domain situation where um, we would have to sell it. We kind of want to make this our, our home home, and so we've put a lot of sweat equity and have some good equity in it. Um, so I would prefer to um, sell the investment now and go and find something that we can actually make our home or we kind of gamble and see whether or not they take our whole house or just up to our front door. Because <laughs> your quality of life, Rachel, changes drastically, right, when this happens. <laughs> Would you say? I mean, yeah. like, do you feel that? Yeah, I'm like that. Yeah, it changes. Are they the game. for I mean, sure going to take something, or you're just thinking? Wait a minute. Have they already announced a no. Wayne a lane widening that is going to take some of your yard, or you're just thinking that pretty soon they're going to? So they have announced and are actively working on the street we live on to widen it, but they take it like block by block. So we are the next block, but they haven't announced that. And they have, there's a process. So this wouldn't be like right now. I'm just preparing. We've been yeah, in the but your buyer, your buyer would know all of this. Um, it's so they might know all of this. It hasn't been announced that our block is actively being worked on and they have to get, you know, a whole bunch of permits and grants and things. So it'll be a few years, but that's oh, why I'd okay. like to sell okay. before this is okay. in front yeah. of us. Yeah, I'll go ahead and sell it. <laughs> what, what's wrong with selling it now? Um, the, we are adjacent to the area we'd like to be in, but those houses are selling for like seven hundred thousand dollars, and we only have about two hundred k in equity. So um, we would either what is have your home to be worth? really stretched for forty, four sixty. Okay, all right. Well, okay. Yeah, but we do, don't do have you need to move? Do you need to do. move? Yes. Do you need to double the price of your house? No. Okay. So I mean, you, there's some other options on the table here somewhere. I mean, you guys could, Rachel, yeah. go rent somewhere for a year or two, save, and then go to what's where your, you guys want to be. What's your household income? So, we have about ninety-two thousand, yeah, ninety-two thousand annual right now. I okay. just got another job though. Okay. Well, I guess you guys talk through. What we tell folks to do is never take out a mortgage more more than a fifteen year, where the payments more than a fourth of your take home pay. If you can make a move to another neighborhood that fits that that gets all of this um, uncertainty out of your life, then yes, I would do that. No, I would not use this as an excuse to overbuy and put yourself in a pinch on the other side and go, oh, well, we had to. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Uh, you, didn't have to, you didn't have to get yourself bankrupt. So just buy a home where the payment, after you put your down payment, your equity from your other house, is no more than a fourth of your take-home pay on a 15-year fixed. If you're doing that, I'm all for your move. If you're going to take out more than that, 
I'm not for your move. And that's, that's the guidelines that we use around here. Jacob is in Rochester, New York. Hi, Jacob. How are you? Hi, Dave. How are you today? I'm good. Good. How can we help? So I am 18 years old. I'm attending. I'm a freshman at a small university in upstate New York going for astrophysics. And what I'm calling about today is, um, unfortunately, a couple months ago, my father passed away. Oh, no. What happened? um, He had a heart attack while he was mowing the lawn. How old was he? How old, say that again? how old was he, Jacob? He turned 60 in July. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. I'm so Thank sorry. You. Oh. Wow. Thank you. Oh, that's tragic. So, mm. yeah. So the reason that I'm calling is because he also left me a pretty substantial amount of money through his life insurance policy, which was 334000 in cash. And so my question is what... I should be doing with that. I do, you know, have a thought in, you know, the back of my head right now, obviously paying cash for college yes. would make sense. Yes. I would think yes. right now it's going to be about 80 to a hundred to finish my degree. Okay. And how were, how so were I, you paying for the degree before his passing? Well, my mom had about 35 saved up in a college fund. It was a little bit more before the pandemic and then it went down a little bit, but that's what she had saved up. So she was, so we were going to take out student loans, you know, as you do and just pay them off, you know, like any normal person would. So, okay. So that was the original plan. Wow. So here, here's, this sounds like when you've gone through a tragedy And when you're 18 years old, this sounds like it's a lot of money and it can, it's not, it will evaporate if you're not very, very careful. Mm. So you have to, that's what I'm really worried about. Yeah. You have to like raise your right hand and pretend like that money's not there. Swear off of it. Okay. The only, the, uh, with the, the only exception being just paying college tuition. And I want you to drain down the college fund before you even touch this for those purposes. So what I want you to do is, number one, swear off of using the money. I want you to figure out a way to get through life with no student loans and without burning this money. So we're not going and buying a car. We're not going and buying a house. We're not going on a trip. We're not doing anything like that, okay? We're simply going to get through school and live on beans and rice while we're doing it. That's it. Then when you get through school and have your degree, go get a job. And then that money's sitting there and can grow as an investment and be a huge blessing to you later on. Okay. So let's pretend mm-hmm. that 330, you use it up, you use 80 and finish school. That leaves you 250. If you'll leave it alone in seven years at 25 years old, that 250 will be a half a million. If you'll leave it alone in seven years, that half a million will be a million at 32. At 32 years old, you're a millionaire if you'll figure out a way to live and use $80,000 of this for tuition and leave your hands off the rest of it. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's what the numbers will do. But that the big problem is not the money. The big problem is you keeping your hands a, off of it. And that's in a mutual fund. Yep, that's in a good mutual fund. So right. jump, on, jump on RamseySolutions.com and click on Smart Vester and sit down with a Smart Vester Pro and learn about mutual funds and talk through how you can use 80 of this to finish your school, get a job, live with your own earnings, and keep your hands off of this, and it'll make you a millionaire when you're 32. That's kind of cool. Sorry you're going through this, but it could be a huge blessing, obviously. This is The Ramsey Show.
headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for being with us, America. The phone number here is 888-825-5225. Number one best-selling author, Ramsey Personality, and host of the Smart Money Happy Hour is Rachel Cruz. She's my co-host today, also my daughter. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Chase is in Mobile, Alabama. Hi, Chase. How are you? I'm great. How are y'all? Better than we deserve. How can we help? So I've got a uh, a lot of upcoming changes this this year expected in my finances. I'm uh, 25 years old. I just got a um, move up in my career to where I'm expected to double or triple my my expected salary this year. I was going wow. from around 40 to 60 thousand. I'm expecting to make somewhere around 150 to 200 thousand myself this year. Wow! What do you do? Um, I've been a welder for the past several years, but I just became qualified and, and lined up some jobs to become a welding inspector, which is going to come with a lot more money. Wow, good for you. Uh, good job, well Chase. But I'm also getting married uh, this September, and my wife, or my fiance, she's a nurse, and we have, we've lived together for a while now, but, you know, that's going to, so not only am I going to increase my own income, but her income is going to join with mine as well as the debts combined, you know, so everything's just going to dramatically change this year. And I'm just wondering how to navigate. Not only we have a small debt, I mean, the house and her car and her student loans total to less than 200,000. I have no debt personally. And then the in, uh, increase dramatically as well as getting married. So I was just wondering what's your advice on how to navigate this upcoming year. Well, congratulations. What a great year. Yes, sir. Thank you. How old are you? 25. Good for you. That's great, Chase. Um, how much does she make a year? I would say close to 70, 75,000. Okay. That's amazing. So you yeah. guys will be up to almost 300 grand together. No, 200. Yes, ma'am. I'm hoping so. Well, he's going to make 200. Oh, he's making 150, right? You said you were going to. Somewhere between 150 and 200. It's kind of hard to gauge. Okay, okay. okay. I jumped, I jumped I haven't, to 250. Haven't got there yet. Okay. okay. So you're still a quarter million dollars at 25 years old. Way to go. Yeah, that's amazing. So is the house, is it in her name? It is. Where are you guys are? And how much do you owe on that? I want to say about 160. Okay. And how much does she owe on her car? Maybe 10. Okay. Left. And student loans? Maybe 10 on that as okay. well. Okay. Well, the first thing I would do, Chase, is, and hopefully you guys are having these conversations now, but I would sit down and make sure you guys are on the same track when it comes to your money, that you guys have the same goals, you have the same value systems around money, and you guys work as a team. My, my husband and I, we just went to lunch before the show, and we do this every January where we sit down and we look at last year, we look at this coming year, and, and even just dreaming and talking through tactical things, but also just kind of big goals for the year and just knowing that we have the same, we, we approach money differently, right? I'm the spender, he's the saver, like, like there's natural personalities within it, but we are a team and we see ourselves moving the, in the same direction. So Chase, I would, uh, if you haven't already, making sure that you guys, from a value system standpoint, and what I mean by that is we're not gonna use debt, uh, we have goals here, here, and here, like we are working in the same direction together, I think would be number one is what I would say to you. And then number two, make a plan to, to get rid of this debt. I mean, pay, pay off the car, pay off the student loan, have a big goal to pay off the house, which you guys absolutely can do, uh, especially with your income here in the next few years. So, so there's some really fun things you guys can do, Chase. I just want to make sure that you all are in agreement on what to do and even how to go about that. Do you feel like you guys are in a similar mindset with that or will that be kind of a big conversation? Uh, I feel... I feel confident we can be on the same page. I'd, I'd say she's been the more responsible financially over the past, you know, five or six years. We've been together for two years, but she okay. was purchasing a house and a vehicle and doing things. Getting but she's doing it with debt. I mean, she yeah, she was buying right. a car and stuff. But I mean, 
where I have I've never really had anything, but I never made much money, and now I'm about to start making a lot of money. And right. I'm just trying and to you can learn easily, how to use it. Yeah, and you can easily creep into lifestyle creep. Well, Chase, if you hold on the line, um, Austin's going to pick up because I want to gift you guys as a wedding gift from us to you, uh, Financial Peace University. So this is our nine lesson course. And you guys watch these videos together. Um, also throw in Every Dollar Premium, and that's our budgeting app. And you guys together, again, learn together, sit down together. And this subject is one, Chase, that can it can be a point of unity and excitement or a point of a lot of pain for married couples. So starting off on that same mindset, I think, is the first big, big step. Um, the, the last detail is do not pay any of her debt with your money until you're married. Right. Okay. So after September, it's ours, our house, our yep, car, yep. our student loan, our income until September. It's separate. Um, you just have a roommate and you don't pay your roommate stuff. You get yourself in legal and relational pinches if you do that. So um, you wait until after you're married to pay each to pay on each other's stuff okay and then you combine everything when you're married so hang on austin will pick up and we'll get you signed up for all that what a great year you've got ahead of you so fun chase congratulations yeah very very proud of you open phones at 888-825-5225 george camel has a brand new book coming out next week january 16th on tuesday is launch date it's called breaking free from broke you can pre-order it today for only twenty dollars and get a hundred dollars in free bonus items including instant access to george's newest talk show me the money exclusive access to an online private event and a Q&A with George, audiobook and ebook. January 15th is the last day you can get all that stuff for 20 bucks, including the book, and we'll ship it all to you on the 16th. If you wait till the 16th, the book will be $20, and um, that's what you'll get the book. So you want all the good stuff? You get it now. That's a good idea. This book is incredible. It exposes the most common money myths and excuses head on. It deals with all the traps and the myths and the garbage out there. Really good research in here. George has done a great job with that. funny. And he's funny. It's so he's funny. funny. <laughs> he's so snarky and so smart. It's all good. So check it out. RamseySolutions.com slash store. And uh, go ahead and get your copy now of Breaking Free from Broke, the ultimate guide to more money and less stress. This book, um, when I read it, it reminded me of my first book, Financial Peace, which uh, where we went through all the different things about money. And George, of course, does it in a very millennial way with a lot of snark and a lot of fun and uh, really good, up-to-date, cutting-edge research on this stuff. It's worth the read. You will like it. Breaking Free from Broke by George Camel. This is is the Ramsey Show. Cruz Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Sam is in Canada. Hey, Sam, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you, Dave, for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Right. So I am a Christian, and I've always tied it, Tom tied 10% of our income, but I guess I just wanted to get a bit of advice or validation, I suppose, regarding where we are with our baby steps. So right now we're at baby step number four, and we're working towards five and six and putting 15% towards um, investing. Uh, but since we tithe, um, 
it's not a lot of margin to work with. So um, I guess I just wanted to see what your take is regarding that. Okay. Um, well, first and foremost, with the tithe, I'm anything but a legalist. Um, yes. God does not need your money, and he doesn't love mm-hmm. you more if you tithe, and he doesn't hold yep. withhold blessings if you don't tithe. I can't find mm-hmm. any of that in Scripture. Um, yep. But what I am sure of, of having taught this biblical finance for 30-plus years now, that God has us yep. to tithe as a baseline, a starter point in our generosity, because he wants to teach us to be generous, to take on yes. that character quality of his, because he is obviously a giver. And uh, yeah. so your Heavenly Father's not mad at you about your percentages or anything else. I yes. personally, in that mindset then, have chosen to never miss a tithe check, okay. because it's at least the, it's the, a minimal starting point for my generosity. And I'm always trying to learn to be a good investor and a good uh, giver and um, Mm -hmm. a good budgeter, a good steward, all of those things. And so uh, the tithe is first fruits in Old Testament. It's off the top before anything else. Uh, But that's not, it's not a salvation issue. It's not a God's love issue. It's none of that. It's simply your Heavenly Father saying, this is the best way to ride a bicycle. This is the best way to handle money. It's the best way to live your life, is to have a, a natural, steady rhythm of generosity, and 10% is a starting point. Um, I find okay. people that are not, uh, they're not stringent enough with it, and then I find people who are so legalistic with it that they get confused about it. Mm-hmm. And so yep. I, I, I try to not be on either one of those sides. I would have rather be just on a different spectrum. But uh, if I were in your shoes, I would take 10% off the top before I did anything. It's what I do. Yeah, and I would say too, Sam, with giving, probably anything in money, but I think especially giving, there's an interesting habit that's created that it, when it does just become the rhythm and you stop kind of looking at the number leaving and all of that. And it's just, it's kind of one of those things you said, this is who I am. I'm a giver and this is what we do in our household. And it almost kind of becomes that non-negotiable and it's that habit and it continues and continues. It will continue through your life, obviously, as you're choosing to do that action. And where people get tripped up is they believe, well, if I just had more money or if I get to this certain part, it'll be easier to give. You know, we can kind of like make that argument and to a degree, a small percentage, I'm like, okay, I get it. But what's crazy is if you're not in the habit of it, it doesn't become easier. People think, well, if I just had, you know, X amount more a year, it would be easier. But when your baseline is with your habits a certain way, even getting that amount, it gets eaten up with life. And, you you know, it's just it, this thought of if I just had more, it would be easier doesn't always come to fruition. Sometimes it, it becomes harder. So JP, making it a rhythm in your life. Yeah. JP Morgan huge. told the story that when he was a child, he uh, went out and earned a dollar and 50 cents and he brought it home to his mom and uh, she spread it out on the table and uh, she said, what are you going to do with it? And he said, what should I do with it? And she said, I would be very happy if you would tithe on it. And he said, I tithed the first dollar fifty I ever made, and I tithed every dollar thereafter. Oh, it was Rockefeller. I was Rockefeller. I yeah. said, Morgan, you're yeah. Rockefeller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it started with a dollar fifty. It didn't start with yep. the first time I got, finally got 15000 a month. That's right. That's right. It, um, so it, it, you're right to start when it's there. And, I mean, I remember the first time I gave $1,000 as a tithe. I thought, wow, that means I made $10,000. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And then I remember the first time I gave $10,000. Oh, my gosh. It means I made $100,000. Oh, my gosh. You know, and, uh, you know, you. but it, it, as if you're somehow doing God a favor, it's kind of funny. It's <laughs> right. kind of funny. He's up there giggling, going. Pfft. Yeah. yeah. And big, again, big say, Dave's helping me out here. And again, it's not a legalistic thing, Sam, but also with your specific question, baby steps four through six, that's a long time. So like. That's a, that's a long process, right? I mean, if someone's like, can I skip the tithe for a month, X, Y, and Z? I'm like, listen, you're not legalistic about this, you guys. But that would be a habit shift. Four through six is a long time frame yeah, where your habit would change. And I just, don't, I just don't want that for you. I want you to be in that consistent habit. We tithed, for, just for everybody's information, all the way into bankruptcy court. 
and all the way out. So those people that say you automatically are protected or blessed when you tithe, bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> you still have free will to make bad decisions with yeah, money. Yeah, you can still make, you can still wreck the car. I can promise you. Okay, so I mean, I did have one of those blue-haired ladies say, "Well, you just didn't have enough faith," and I said, "Well, honey, they took everything else. All I had left was faith." <laughs> so, um, you know, that's just that's just not true. Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, experientially or biblically. And what's wild is, you know. When you do give, and I think this is probably true if you consider yourself a spiritual person or not, you experience this level of joy. You know, we there were some videos going around that our team did. George did some. Jay mm-hmm. did some of giving. And well, I'm like, you even watching it, I wasn't even there participating in it. But you They t- were giving away my money and, just, and they were joyful. And you just cry. I mean, as a viewer of the videos, you just cry. I'm like, there is something about joy that you just can't get. I mean, like there's beautiful wonders of the world. There's awesome cars in life. I mean, there's things in life that are great to go and experience and buy. But there is just something that touches us in our human souls that giving does that other things just don't and it and it provides longer lasting joy and to rob yourself of that too uh is is unfair to you as a person so that's why we say to be giving regardless of your baby step at the top of the every dollar budget our budgeting app giving is the very first line item which is very different than a lot of other financial experts out there that you will hear uh this is an important value system of our plan because again it's for you, right? You experience something that is so beautiful and so wonderful. And then the added benefit, or the first benefit, I guess, is that it's helping the other person on the other side, right? The, yeah. That actually needs it. So yeah. there's something about it, you guys, that you just, you don't want to miss it. It's hard to find someone that's uh, depressed, that's outrageously generous. Mm. Very difficult to find. Not many of them out there. It's hard to find someone uh, that makes a bad husband or a bad wife that is outrageously generous. Uh, it, it's hard to find them. They, they, they hard, very unusual, very unusual. So, the, you know, generosity is not an act. It's a character quality. And what we're doing is developing the character quality. And so it, and that results in acts of generosity, but the, the, it's, a, it's like integrity. There are, uh, acts that show integrity acts that show honesty, but it's actually a quality. It's a human quality that you can adopt and choose to be that. You can just decide today, bing, I'm a person of integrity. Bing, Mm -hmm. I'm a generous person. And Sam, all of that's not directed at you. Your question was early answered early on in this discussion, but it got us on a soapbox because we love to talk about if you'll live like no one else later, you can live and give like no one else. You can put yourself in a position that you can give more than you made than you used to make in a year. You yeah. can put yourself in that position and uh, and just and watch what it does to those around you. Watch what it does to your face when you do that, folks. You cannot mess up generosity. It's almost impossible. It's the easiest of the financial principles to grasp. And Sam, thank you for letting us jump off on our soapbox as the uh, after we answered your question. <laughs> This is The Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Armand and Romina are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hello, Dave. How's Hi, it Rachel. Going? It Hi, is Rachel. crazy Hi, being up here. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? We live in Anaheim, California, right next to Disneyland. Yeah, very nice. cool. Yes, welcome to yes. Nashville. Good to have you. Thank you for having Good us. Good to be here. And how much debt have you paid off? We paid off over a little bit of 130 
$30,000. Excellent. How long did this take? 20 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? We started off around 119 and then we bumped up our income to 180 Cool. What nice. do y'all do for a living? Um, I'm a registered nurse. I work at a hospital mm -hmm. on the orthopedic unit. Oh, cool. And then I'll be doing... Um, nursing education at the end of the month. So I'm also gonna do a part-time teaching job. Neat. Yes. And uh, I'm a freelance videographer and I also worked at a nursing facility as an activities assistant. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Awesome. Good for you guys, yes. well done. What kind of debt was your 130,000? Pretty much uh, everything, like normal people. We had um, student loans, mm -hmm. uh, credit cards mm -hmm. that we used for some of his equipment for work, mm -hmm. um, little things. We also um, had a Subaru. Mm -hmm. that we paid off as well. That mm -hmm. was the last thing. And then we were also able to cash flow a car during that process mm -hmm. while we were expecting a baby boy. Yay. Oh my gosh. There we go. Yes. There yeah. we go. Good for you. So sweet. Well yes. done. Thank you. So what happened two years ago that put you guys on this Ramsey plan? It's a really long story, but I will make it short. Um, I just kind of want to have a precursor story. So me and Armin have always been weird people. Um, <laughs> we've been together for 14 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we were long distance mm -hmm. starting our relationship. So mm -hmm. he was in San Francisco. I was in Orange County, California. Mm -hmm. So we did that for five years. And then we got married um, in 2018. So we've been married for five years. Mm -hmm. And then during the pandemic, 2020, we were like, that's our year. We want to get a house and we want to move out, which we did. Mm -hmm. um, however, in the beginning of 2020, we had no idea that the pandemic was going to happen. So Armin got laid off. Mm, he got yeah. laid off. Yes. After the house, after buying the house. Um, no, before. before. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. And so we were quarantined in my mom's house, mm. which was quite an interesting experience because it was a full house. We had these big plans to move mm. out and get our own place together. Um, but that didn't stop us. We were like, you know what? Um, while everyone's losing their homes and their jobs, even though you are laid off, like, let's do it. Let's just go. So I picked up three jobs. Wow. As a registered nurse uh, during COVID, wow. during the pandemic, yes. Wow. And then I was selling uh, keto low-carb cookies <laughs> as a bake sale just to kind of make extra cash. Mm -hmm. So I would wake up early in the morning, make some cookies, go to work, did three jobs, and I was doing my master's online while I was doing it, and I was collecting his EDD checks. Wow. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So... Um, back to what I was saying, I feel like if we were able to do that, we were like, you know what? We didn't even know what gazelle intense was, but we were doing it. It was instilled in our, in our bodies, in our mind, in our spirit, mm -hmm. our souls as a couple. And I said, if we can do that during the pandemic and save up a down payment during COVID with no job, what more can we do this to pay off our debt? Mm. So we decided to do that. How'd yeah. you find us? Um, my brother was telling us, hey, have you guys thought about paying off your debts and so forth? And at first we were kind of like, yeah, it's okay. Like, we'll just keep it. Like, we're not in any rush to do it. But um, what he said really stuck with me. And then I remember I was watching um, YouTube, trying to see how to get out of debt. And I came across The Ramsey Show. And I remember watching Candace from Indianapolis, who paid off 230000 mm -hmm. something um, of her debt by herself. Yes. I was like, what more? We can do it. And other other couples out there, they had smaller shovels than we did. They had their little trowels. And I was like, you know what? We got a shovel. Like, let's kill it. Let's do this. Yep. So we did it. We, we yep. definitely worked really hard through yep. it all. Yes. Way to go. Thank that's you. amazing. Thank you so yes. much. Yes. That's amazing. Okay, and then how old's how old's the baby? Uh, Shiloh is eight months. Shiloh's eight yes. months. Um, so he can't. Yeah. So you guys were were expecting a baby during yeah, some of this too. Um, we w we actually experienced a miscarriage in February of 2022. Mm, so sorry. Mm, that's that's okay. okay. Um, I don't need anyone's pity. It's cool. <laughs> no, no, God no. God had other plans, yeah. and I'm I'm so glad he did because once that happened, we were like, you know, let's clean up this mess. We yeah. don't have kids. Yeah. Let's just do this. Let's take care of everything. So when that time comes, we can set our ourselves up kind yeah. of better when when a baby comes like yeah during covid like yeah. i i was like seeing how hard she was working yeah and i was just like when i lost my job and i was on edd for a while 
I, you know, I've always been passionate about video and videography and I always just was like, okay, is there a way to, to kind of make this my thing? Like after I lost my job, I used to work at a pharmacy company, um, for seven years before I got laid off in COVID. And so, but on the sides, I've always done like creative work, like with video and stuff like that. And then I was just like looking at how hard she was working and I was like inspired. And I remember going to, um, Las Vegas to one of your conferences yes. and Instantly, I was just hearing other people's testimony, uh, testimonials, and then I was hearing you guys talk. And then from there, with the combination of with like the actual like miscarriage and stuff like that, mm. I was super inspired to just kind of just run with it and then go with what my heart was telling me, like passionate yeah. wise. Like I, I wanted, supported him all the way. I, I said, you know what, a, do it. Ken it Coleman a, would be so proud yeah, of you. It was Honestly, a risky time. Yes, it was yeah. so risky to jump into something that I didn't know, like didn't seem very like stable, but like I wanted to do it. I know my heart was in it. And then, you know, luckily, like a year later, I just started contracting out with the companies that I continue to work for till this day. Wow. And it's been my full time thing. Ever wow. Since. Very good. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm so proud of him. So That's when people amazing. find out you paid off one hundred and thirty thousand dollars of debt in 20 months and they say, how would you do that? What do you tell them the keys to getting out of debt are? I would say discipline. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a reason why. Mm -hmm. For those two reasons, even if you go off budget or you get lazy, those two reasons will bring you back. Mm -hmm. um, and I think teamwork really matters as well. Teamwork, for yeah. sure. Commitment. There was a time where we were kind of, um, during baby step pause, or baby step two pause, I'm sorry, we were kind of getting lazy, and it was like the first trimester. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to eat at home. Like, I want to eat out. Like, this baby <laughs> wants in and out every yeah. day. I don't know, what's fries? It just wants yeah. fries. I don't I'm know. sick of eating it for four days straight. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to eat out, and I was like, you know, let's give ourselves grace. Like, let's budget whatever. We had some margin, so we did eat out and things like that but once we knew that once the baby comes we're gonna go back into it and we did and I remember I was on the website actually um, <laughs> I was bored at work and I went on the website and then I saw our picture on the website yep. and I remember like <laughs> Oh my gosh, like we're on the Ramsey website. Like now we have to do this. We can we cannot be was on it, this page. Was it from the conference? Oh yeah, yeah. From, it the was conference. from the conference. Oh yeah. yeah. How funny is that? Oh yes. my gosh. And so when I went on it, I was like, oh my I was like, oh my god, Armand, we are on we're on the website. We, we can, can't be seen in the now. No, we cannot be a that's hypocrite like, that's and like, like putting your face on the post office. Exactly. Oh my god. So I said, okay, so it relit a fire under our butts and we definitely so went back. We went back into it. So discipline and your reason why, because it will bring you back. And get on the Ramsey website. So now, yeah. we, now, we, now, we, now we know how to get people motivated. We just got to yeah. put them on the site. Yes. Or they just have a really I, cool mullet haircut. Shame on me yeah. staying out of in and then, out burger. And then I told them, I was like, I don't know why they picked us. Maybe we look really broke. I have no idea. With that haircut, With maybe. With that mullet. Yeah, he had this weird mullet. If they can do it, anyone can do it. Anyone can do oh, it. You guys yes. are awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much. You guys are amazing. We love you guys so much. You've changed our lives. So, we're so proud of you. You've this changed your life, Hero. Thank you. Way Thank to go, you. heroes. Thank hey, you. Hey, we've got the uh, Baby Steps Millionaires book, the Total Money Makeover book, and a Financial Peace University membership for you to live or give. Perfect. That's the Live and Give box to say thanks for coming from all the way from California. You guys right. got it going. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank well you. done. Well done. And now we know a new secret. Just put them on the website. <laughs> More motivation. Yes. Armand and Romina. 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 And, Romina and Shiloh from yes. Anaheim, California. 130000 paid off in 20 months, making 119 to 180 Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. We're debt-free! Boys and girls, woohoo! This is the Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, Psalms 34, 19, the righteous person may have troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Maya Angelou said, I have learned that even when I have pains, I don't have to be one. (laughs) (laughs) Kyle is with us in Indiana. Hi, Kyle. How are you? Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call, Miss Rachel. Good to uh, be talking to you, too. How y'all doing today? Better, Thank you, Kyle. Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? Well, uh, I'm a big fan of y'all. I, I pay a lot of attention to you. I'm 30. I uh, just turned 30 last week, and uh, I did some stupid about a year ago, thinking that, you know, building a good credit score is a good way to leverage uh, equity on my home and and invest in real estate. But I know better now. I know better. Um so I leveraged the motorcycle, and I'm on about a three-month course of getting it paid the rest of the way off. And other than that, uh, I just have a mortgage on my home, and I have a paid-for investment property that is ready to be moved into or sell. And my question for you is today, should I sell the investment property, which I have about a third of what it's worth, into it and pay my mortgage off, or keep it and let it cash flow nine fifty a month and pay my mortgage off early? How much do you make a year, Kyle? Uh, I own an HVAC business here, and I I uh, gross fifty two thousand a year from that uh, as a salary. Okay. And how much do you owe on your primary home? Seventy three. Seventy three thousand. Yeah. Okay. And how much is the rental worth? I'd say I talked to a realtor about it, and they said uh, upwards between one thirty and one fifty is a realistic measure for it. Oh, nice. Well, my knee jerk, Kyle, I'll be curious, the real estate guy over here that loves real estate. I mean, it's a it's a paid for asset, right? And do you enjoy it? Like, do you enjoy? Have you have you been? I guess you haven't been out long. You just got it. Yeah, I guess that's true. I was going to say, does it does that sound like a burden to you to put renters in and everything? No, I bought it in February last year. Um, and I've spent the last year working on it myself. I put all new HVAC, all new flooring, all new water lines, redid the bathroom, did new drywall and power. Uh, everything is refresh and new in this home, and it's all paid for. So it's it's a nine fifty a month generator if I rent it out, and I'm targeting rest care patients, which is the home health aid people that have twenty four hour care. Does and your, does they, your, they, are they, you married? Checks out. Yes, I'm married. What, what, what does she make? My wife, she's a stay at home mom. Okay. So your household income's fifty thousand bucks, you owe seventy five, and the rental's worth a hundred and thirty. Is that the right numbers? Correct. Okay. All right. Um well if you keep the rental, you guys have you and your wife have got to uh lock arms and say, What can we do to tighten up everything and let's go ahead and get this house paid off? Because the Bad news is you got a mortgage on your house and not on your rental. Mm-hmm. The good news is it's not much of a mortgage. It's only 75000 And so, you know, 25000 a year, it's gone in three years. Uh, we'll have to up our income. You know, and, and you, you know, do something to increase your income during that time or something like that. That's fine. I, if you're not making good progress on uh, chunking away at your mortgage, like really big old chunks, um, Within a couple of years, I'm selling the rental. Okay. Uh, if you want to keep it and give that a run, I would. But you don't want to look up 10 years from now, still have a mortgage and a paid-for rental. No, that's not going to happen. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. So, Do you have any money saved, Kyle? Do you guys have an emergency fund or anything? I did, and uh, I woke up, smelled the roses, and said, we're paying this Harley off. So oh, I, I left. The I left 1,200 in. I left 1,200 in the money market, and I took about 6,800 and threw it on the Harley. Okay. So first thing we got to do is we got to rebuild the emergency fund. The next thing we got to do is develop a game plan to pay off your house in big chunks. And if you're not going to pay it off yeah. in big chunks, then I would dump the rental. There's a part of me that would just dump it, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Because that would give you a lot of peace. Yeah, that you, would put money back in a savings. That would pay off the car. That would pay off the house. And then if you guys want to get in the rental business and do it later um, and save up and do it. But there is a part of me that would yeah. just want the peace of mind today, you know? But when, it was not a bad answer to just sell it today. But if you, you, you know, I can listen. I can listen to your, yeah. the way you're talking about it. You don't want to sell it. You want to try it. 
you want to give this a run. So if you're going to give it a run, then you've get the, the trade-off is over on the other side over here, we've got to pay a price and get this stinking mortgage gone. Um, in a, because I, I would not have done what you've done. Um, but you're there now, so let's let's figure out what the best way forward is now. All right, Stephen is with us in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Stephen. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. How can we help? I basically just had um, I needed some guidance on the on this uh, truck on this car loan that I got going on. I, me and my wife, we recently signed up for your Financial Peace University. And so we are on step one, which is getting the thousand dollars in savings. But we're with the budgeting. I'm pretty sure we're going to get there pretty soon within the next couple months. So I'm already starting to think about uh, the second baby step, which is paying off our debt. And the big, the biggest debt we don't have that much really. The biggest debt that we have is my truck. And I, I wanted to get some advice on how I should really handle that. I wasn't sure if um, what do you owe on? when I have the income. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. What's, oh, your, house, what's your household actually. income? Annually, we take in, we take home about 66. I'd sell it. Sell it? Yep. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. You, you, have, too much, you got... have too much invested in cars that are going down okay. in value. You have over half your annual income, including her car, tied up in cars. Mm-hmm. It's too much. Even if your truck was paid for, I'd sell it. Because you, you're, okay, turn, yeah. you're, turn, you're going to turn 27000 into 10000 in about 20 minutes. And I like it. I mean, okay. I drive a nice truck. I drove a truck to work today. You know, I love my Raptor. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not against having a nice truck. I just don't want your nice truck to have you. And it does right now. It owns you. Uh, now, if you all see that your income is going to be coming up significantly and you want to fight through and pay it off, that's okay. But rule of thumb is, Stephen, don't have things with motors and wheels or wheels added together that equal more than half your annual income because if you do you have too much tied up in things that are going down in value because if it's got wheels and or a motor it's going down in value yeah period yeah and steven to earlier what you said of getting that thousand dollars i mean we want you to do that even faster you said a couple of months and i would i would challenge you yeah what can you sell what can you do i mean what to scrape together a thousand dollars like ASAP. That's the fastest baby step that we want you to just hit and tackle, um, because it changes the momentum of the whole process too. Gra- when you do garage that. sale, Facebook Marketplace, whatever you got to do, sell so much stuff the kids think they're next. And really, I, I, I want baby step one done in one month. One thousand thousand dollars in one month. You ought to be able to go out there and scratch that together from different sources. Get the nickels out of the corner of the couch. Everything. Yep. Yep. Let's. Um, and when you sell this truck, it'll free up that that payment which every is, month which is probably 800 bucks a month yeah so you'll be able to do it faster and you may have to take out a loan on the difference to steven on the if truck you're if, it's, down. if you're upside down on it um that may that may be a, a realistic thing and, and scrape together some money and get something else and yeah, yeah but it's but when you're losing as much as you lose on vehicles and you have so much tied up in vehicles so many dollars against vehicles um, of any kind, boats, sea dews, snowmobiles, side by sides, whatever the thing is, it's going down in value. Harley's the last caller, right? And guys, it's just hard to get ahead because you're losing every year on every one of those things. And uh, I'm not against you having a nice car. I'm just against you, you being able to afford it. You got to get yourself in a position that you can afford to lose that kind of money. And you're not there right now. So if I'm you. The shortest distance for you is dumping that truck and getting yourself under control. Thanks for calling in, bro. Sorry to be the bearer. Sell the truck! I'm that guy. (laughs) I'm that guy just because I love you and I want you to win. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus.